legendary UFO club, opened its doors in December 1966. Even though it only lasted for a few months, the club played a major role in the development of the underground scene in London, when psychedelia was at its peak. In October 1967, a month after the club closed its doors, Melody Maker journalist Nick Jones wrote an article about the rise and fall of the UFO club, and spoke to one of its founders, Joe Boyd. Last Christmas, illuminated by the gentle shining of Christmas trees all over London, came an unidentified flying object. And it landed and it opened its doors. UFO was a club. Actually, more than a club because it was the first of its kind in Britain. UFO was the London youth movement and the underground coming up for air. Joe Boyd pilots UFO. Joe said, the UFO club had a very important function in that it was the kind of shrine or citadel for a lot of beautiful people. And that's probably the biggest shame in its closing. But UFO was just a surface manifestation, like the clothes, the beads and the bells. UFO may have closed, but its soul still lives with the beautiful people. Just what did UFO mean? Where did this mecca fit into the pop music world? And if it was needed, why is it closing down 10 calendar months later? Joe Boyd continued, We don't have any idea of what's going to happen next. But I think that when you reflect on what has happened over the last year, the changes on the scene have been good. UFO was unique because it was the only place where you could see groups who were doing new things, things that couldn't be presented at any other venues. Pink Floyd originally began to work on their act at John Hopkins Free School. And when we got the club going in Tottenham Court Road, we opened up with the Floyd. Soft Machine followed Pink Floyd. The song My Friend Jack by The Smoke was climbing up the charts, so we booked them. However, The Smoke got stuck in Germany or something, so I rang up the agency and asked him to get another group as quickly as possible. So he sent down a band called The In Crowd. I was pretty nervous at the thought of some group called the In Crowd, of all the names, playing UFO. But when they arrived at the club, we were informed that they had changed their name to Tomorrow. And so they played and so they blew everybody's minds. It was beautiful. Jimi Hendrix leapt up on stage and played bass. It was all very amazing and we had them back every three weeks. Gradually, the word started to spread. The crowds got bigger and more of the hard pop core began to make it to UFO to see what was going on. One very groovy night was Dat of the Stones court case. Tomorrow we're playing, the club just emptied from 12 to about 3 o'clock, and we all went down to Piccadilly to demonstrate about the Stones' convictions. Eventually, everybody went back to the club. At 5 o'clock in the morning, it was absolutely jam-packed to the ceiling. The atmosphere was incredible. Tomorrow came on for their last set, and it was like nothing on earth. There was just so much feeling coming from the audience, and then, Twink of Tomorrow, started singing Revolution Now Revolution Now with a portable microphone. It was really saying something. That night was the first night Tomorrow played Revolution. A friend then put us on to Arthur Brown. Hoppy and I, went down to this club in Mayfair with Susie Cream Cheese. They didn't let us in though so our friend said he was very sorry and made copious arrangements. We trooped off down to Mayfair again the next night and this time we got in. We saw Arthur Brown downstairs. We just flipped out and asked him to come to UFO. But even the UFO crowd took some getting used to Arthur, it wasn't until about the third week that Arthur really began to get through and got some ridiculously fantastic receptions back from the audience. Arthur Brown's the type of guy that, no matter where he is, if you dig them, you can sit there and just groove. You don't have to dance, you don't have to sing, you don't have to move, you just sit there and groove to it. The next milestone was two weeks in June when we had the Move and Pink Floyd booked. We had really huge crowds, unimaginable. A lot of new people joined, and we really began to get a higher ratio of people masquerading as flower people. We began to lose a lot of our earlier supporters. A lot of people stopped coming because they couldn't even get in, it was far too crowded we began to think about looking for a new venue. 
but we wanted to think it out carefully and planned to get a good place. In August, the news of the world came out with the orgy bit. And the police started to put a lot of pressure on the Irish landlord of the premises UFO was using on Tottenham Court Road. So we were given four days notice. I found out on a Tuesday that we were not going to be allowed to open on Friday. Brian Epstein invited us to move to the Champagne Bar of the Savile Theatre for a while. However, some lawyers soon decided that the Champagne Bar of the Savile didn't really suit a UFO. So we finally found ourselves at the Roundhouse. There were some really good nights there, but the Roundhouse has a high rent, the groups were getting more expensive, and we were forced to close down, for a while at least. With this small stone, the London Underground made a gentle splash into the pop scene. And the ripples were felt all over the country. UFO was the forerunner of flower power. Flower power, originally, described a new mode of expression, a freer set of experience-based values for the youth of today. What's your crazy world? You, you don't like, uh, don't, do you like people? Or don't you yes, like Yes, yeah, I like people, but like most people, uh, I'm mad, you know?